Hi, I'm Daniel McGrew with EpiRock Product Support for the Underground Rock Excavation Division. Today we are going to change the striking bar in our MD20 drifter. First thing we have to do is remove our flushing hose from down here. To do that, there are three bolts that are 16 millimeters. Now that we have the three bolts out, we can remove our flushing housing bolt. One thing you want to watch is your seals right here. Before we put it back in, you want to make sure that they are in place and we can lay this down out of the way. Next step we want to do is we want to take these four bolts loose and that will allow us to remove the flushing housing. To do so, you'll need a 24 millimeter wrench and break them loose. Okay, so now that we have separated the flushing housing from the rest of the drifter, now we want to securely grab a hold of it so that we can set it down on the ground and use a block of wood to remove the drifter, the uh, striking bar. So we have our block of wood here that we can strike the striking bar where it will not damage it. Couple of hits and we can remove this seal and then finish driving it the rest of the way out. Set it off of it and then pull the striking bar the rest of the way out. When we're doing this, we want to pay close attention to the wear on these beveled edges right here. And we also want to pay close attention to our rotation or our striking bar chuck right here. Wear inside of here will indicate free drilling where we're using impact and we don't have enough pressure on the bit. And that can damage the drifter if the metal gets in this system. So when we have the drifter or the flushing housing here, we can inspect our seals on the inside as well. If we see that the lip is missing or is cut, now would be a great time to replace it. We also wanna make sure when we put it back together that this seal goes on the drifter itself first. There's a cutout in the drifter itself where this goes. Now, before we put our new striking bar in, these will come with a cap over top of these. You want to make sure you cut that off before you run it through. It will not fit unless you do so. Simply just push it down, push it through the seals. Now, before we put the strike, uh, striking bar in and the flushing housing, we're going to take this seal and put it back in the drifter. And they do go a certain way, so pay attention to how the seal is already bent. Okay, now that we have our seal in place, we also want to make sure that this seal here is in place as well. The other thing that we want to inspect is our driver itself. You want to make sure that there is no more or no less than two millimeter in between these splines at the top. If there is, then it's time to replace it. These also have a knob here. What this can indicate is which side you had it in previously on your last striking bar. This way you can rotate this back and forth and even out your wear on your uh, driver. Now we are ready to put our flushing housing back in. So we just simply just line the splines up with our driver. And before we put it all the way on, we want to make sure that our flushing housing bolts are in the same place. So right now we're 180 degrees out. So we'll simply just spin it. Now we're in the correct location and we'll be able to grease our seals once we're done. So now that we have our driver and our striking bar lined up, our flushing housing is facing the correct location. Now we can push it the rest of the way on. Keep in mind that our seals are still in good place and keep your hands clear of this area as they could get pinched. Okay, now that we have it in and we have enough threads here, we'll use the nuts to drive it 
to pull it rest of the way on. You can run these in till they make contact the hand tight. And then as we tighten these, we'll alternate how we uh, tighten them so that we pull the flushing housing square to the drifter. So once again, we'll use our 24 millimeter wrench. Make a couple of turns. And then come to one of our others. And as you can see, as we turn these in, the flushing housing is coming in closer. So now that we have the nuts tight by hand, by a wrench. We can also put our seal cover back on to protect our bushing in the front. So now we want to torque these 258 foot pounds. And same way as we tighten them, we want to torque them in an alternating sequence. So now that we have everything torqued and we're greased, now we need to reconnect our flushing hose and once again, we want to inspect our seals, make sure they're not cut or worn down. So now that we have our flushing hose reconnected to our flushing housing with our new striking bar, and we've greased our flushing housing seals, now we can reconnect our drill steel and we can go back to drilling. Thank you for watching. And for further assistance, please contact EpiRock via a dealer or one of our service centers.